Hey there, I'm Sven Masterson, one of the co-founders and mentors in the Mentoring Men community. And in today's video, I'm joined by my lovely bride, Zelda, who has no idea what we're gonna talk about. She's such a good sport, but she's willing <laughs> to join me on videos that will be on YouTube. You really couldn't get any more daring than this, <laughs> unless I made them live streamed. And I'm not ready to do that with you yet. Um, so here's what I wanna talk about. This comes up every now and again, it came up today or recently in our community where um, wives get upset that basically why didn't wh why did it take so much conflict or why did it take all this for you to change I've been telling you for years these things <laughs> and you didn't listen to me and then a bunch of men on the internet or in books tell you and suddenly you have this aha moment so I thought Oh yeah, I've heard this a time or two, and I, I thought maybe I could just put it to you. Like, uh, what do you think about that now as a woman who's with a man who's gone through a similar phase like that in the past? Um, I'm just curious how you relate to that, to a woman who might be thinking about that. What words you have, what stories, that kind of thing, and then I'll, I'll share just throughout. Um, I would say think about if the, if the tables were turned and how willing you are to receive instruction and correction from your spouse, because I know that I'm not that willing to receive instruction and correction from my spouse. <laughs> oh, I'm so tempted to chime in. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of laugh. And, and I, I don't think that the way to respond to a partner who's saying this is to, to be like, well, how about you? Yeah. Uh, I've learned that lesson. No, I'm already. just saying, just but, that's one. That's one thing. But also, I think, too, it's just a matter of timing. We can hear the same thing from numerous different sources, and for whatever reason, it comes from that one source, and then it's like an aha moment. And I know that's happened with you numerous times with me. You, I've oh, been like, I've read a book, and I'm like, oh, did you know about this? And you said, didn't I tell you? That well, it's a running joke for me <laughs> that. I could tell you something a hundred times <laughs> and then the Amazon or UPS delivery people could show up and mention it to you who you don't know and suddenly you're like, yeah, I think we should do this. And I'll be like, what changed? Oh, the Amazon delivery guy said, said that that's how you do it. And I remember really being hurt by this actually. Yeah, you um, would be so hurt and really annoyed. I would because I, I, took be it, too. I took it personally that when I said something to you, it didn't actually register. Mm -hmm. Now, I've since understood that differently on a number of levels. Now I would say, well, I actually did not live a very trustable way. I don't mean I was doing seedy, dark things, just a matter of that the level of consistency you need as a woman in, to see in me for you to feel open to me suggesting something is pretty high. Mm -hmm. And I, like a lot of young men, I thought that I was just entitled to that because of being married. Like we say, we say I do, that you should just trust everything I say. And it was you know, unfortunately far too late in life before I realized that there's a lot of consistency needed. And, it, and the consistency that women need is at a level that most men feel threatened by to understand until they realize it's actually good to be to have that bar that high right mm -hmm. um but also then i didn't realize i was hurt because i was seeing that through my lens of already just feeling hurt yeah. right I, not, I have very little to do with you but um yeah did you struggle with this at all like when i started to see things differently did you feel a little bit like you know like why why did it take you so long and or I've been telling you this all along. <laughs> um, I I don't know at that moment. I mean, I think pro I think I definitely had that feeling <laughs> throughout the years of of over time, but not like this big. If you're referring to the big, like the big change in our life and the big turnaround time, I didn't feel that. I didn't feel that way. I think you were a bit preoccupied with kind of your own stuff at the moment too. Yeah. Well, and. You know, up until that that point, I had just kind of resigned myself, like, I didn't really care. And 
Like I didn't really care. Yeah. So as you started to change, then for me, it was just a matter of, I guess, wait and see. So yeah. I didn't, I didn't have a feeling of, oh, I, I see now you're willing to change. Right. And I didn't at that our moment, but I have bit. had before. Our story is a little different than some in our community where um, uh, it's a man being threatened with divorce or separation or ending the marriage and then, or a wife who has said, I need space or I don't love you, that then he goes and does this stuff. We didn't have that story. Mm -hmm. We had it early on, actually, when, mm -hmm. when, when I was like 24. Mm -hmm. But I just, somehow we managed to do that. <laughs> but. <laughs> In our kind of crisis yeah. mode, if anybody would have triggered the end of the marriage, actually it would have been me at the time. Yeah. Um, and yet, yeah, complicated times to sort out. Mm -hmm. So I would just say that to a wife who's saying that, I can understand fully and wholeheartedly how you would feel that way. Um, but then I would just encourage her. Like if, if the woman was sitting right in front of me right now, I would just encourage her to be thankful that the change is taking place now and you know One. <laughs> just accept that it didn't come the way you thought it was going to come I guess I could say that one thing that's helped me uh, maybe understand my own relationship with you this way but I think it's important maybe for women to understand when they relate to men is that I'm really not qualified as a man to tell you how to be a better woman. Yeah. And I think it's fair to say that as much as your heart might be right in telling me how to be a better man, um, one th two things. One, you're not qualified, meaning mm -hmm. you're telling me that from a female perspective, and that's right. a valid and meaningful perspective, but it will never take the place of a man telling me how to be a best man. Yeah. And this is really the problem. And so if you're watching this video and you're angry that your partner has not changed until now and it feels like he has not listened to you is that for men in my age group <clears throat> and I'm 40 I'll be 49 in a couple days and um, and about 98 and a half percent of the men I meet all report well nobody ever told me this and it's it's not it's not um, sheer accidentally what's the word I'm looking for it's it's not random this is like every man tells me this just about how his his dad just didn't share with him these things and so men have really not gotten anybody telling them here's how you you like move and operate in the world as a man we've gotten lots of dysfunctional ways there's lots of like really poor weak messaging that men get along the way for example you know when you're in junior high and you reach puberty oh you have hair on your genitals welcome to manhood like that's the extent of the the welcome to manhood that men get. Yeah. Oh, here you lost your virginity. You're somehow a man now. Um, there's all these really, really silly things that men have sort of kind of ceremonialized into a welcome to manhood, but nobody actually tells a man um, the deeper things about how to be a man in the world, how to relate to women in a in a way that it works. Um, there and so a lot of the messaging that men have had to rely upon has been from peers who also have no idea what the hell they're talking <laughs> about and so if this is really evident today you can get on the internet you can find lots of communities where men are telling other men how to be men but they're essentially immature uh, incomplete boys telling other immature incomplete boys how to try to figure things out and this is really a pandemic problem I would say in culture that sociologists have talked about this a little bit um, Excuse me. bless you <laughs> I think I think there's different causes but I know my father's generation and he would say the same of his father just said nothing they're emotionally absent and so then you live in a culture as a man and it's a culture that tells you your main purpose is to be utilitarian to provide for a family to shut your mouth to quiet your heart and just go about being a worker bee, right? Yeah. So like my father, and I, ha I have a dad I love, and I know loves me, but he didn't talk to me about like, 
how to understand things in my my heart deeply. He didn't tell me about things like the seven archetypes we talk about in our Connected Intimate Man course. I didn't know about a part of me this, that was like a, a poet or sage or artist or warrior, like in Karen Brody's Open Her. Like, nobody told me that stuff. And had I brought it up, the men in my life would have had a blank stare on their face, the same one they had on their face about everything else. And so for men today, this has meant that um, we've had to just figure stuff out with no guides mm -hmm. and very little guides. And even in my own story, in our marriage trouble, that was the problem was there was no men in my life who were willing to come up alongside of me and say, here's what's going on. Here's how to make sense of this. Here's how to get out of this pit you're in and flourish. I found one man that would do that. And then, and then I found another. It was a slow, tedious process. <laughs> Every other person just wanted to judge and, and give me horrible advice yeah. that would have not led me somewhere good. And so I said today in a post related to this, it's a bit like life telling you, you got to be an astronaut and your wife is a librarian. <laughs> and as a librarian, she knows a lot about she a lot of stuff. She give you all the books about ast astronomy. <laughs> right. She could tell me, she could tell me like the card catalog. That's where you're going to find out about astronomy. Mm -hmm. There's where you go to find out about you know, um, rocket science and whatnot, and even his history of astronauts, but you've never been to space and you don't know how to dock a rocket to a, a, a space station. Mm -hmm. And yet this is what, for men, the masculine experience requires a lot. And yet there's nobody telling people what this is like. And so that's actually one of the reasons we started Mentoring Men, not you and I, but myself and the other three founders was, to try to reintroduce to culture a process of men telling other men how to figure these things out, right? And so we found mentors, we got mentoring, and we said to ourselves, we need to keep this snowballing in the yeah. world. We need, to, we need to help men figure out how to pass along the stories of, of manhood, how to know when you've reached the 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 place of uh, um, you might call it a, a mature or initiated man mm -hmm. and um, it's a daunting challenge because at least in Western culture these things aren't there yes. having said all that and then I'll <laughs> shut up and let you talk a little bit I believe actually the same things probably true with women meaning um, I don't know because I haven't lived a life as a woman but I think life is also asking a lot of unrealistic caricature kind of things for women too and that women are not you know necessarily receiving from other w mature women like here's here's how to be a wise virtuous um, engaging woman in the world and so people ask us all the time in mentoring men um, is there something like mentoring women uh, or mentoring men for women or will you create that we always say well like we're the least qualified people <laughs> to create a mentoring community for women um, but do you think such would would be helpful in the world? Is that necessary? What? How did all I just? Are you asking me to tear no. somebody? What is this? <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not. Okay. I'm asking you just like having heard what I just said about a man's experience. Do you feel like that's true for you too, for as a woman? Like, do you feel without guides and mentors as a woman? Um. I'm not setting you up for anything, by the way, to to create a community. No, yeah, no, there's been times where I have felt that way, but I, I, I've sought that out. Like I, over my years of being a, a young mother and young wife, tried to seek out people who would, you know, help and be a guide. And even if it wasn't like something that was formal, but I, I'm yeah. an observer, so I would observe people's life and I would observe if, if a life looked like it was a life of beauty then I would say, well, what, what are some things that they're doing? What are some things that I can take along? I think the, the MOPS program, Mothers of Preschoolers, which is an, oh, yeah, I remember is that. It, it's a definitely a national thing. I don't know if it's international, but that's what they're all about is coming alongside Mothers of Preschoolers. And there's always a MOPS mentor in your MOPS group, a lady who's older I remember without that. small children. And I sought that out when I was a young mom and that was a great benefit to me. Um, but yeah, definitely anything, 
anything that would encourage women to, you know, know how to be a loving wife, a loving mother, and still maintain a sense of self. Like, because there's, there's two sides. There's like the side that says women just, you know, do what you want to do. Like, this is your life, you know, make it how you want to make it, you know, have your career kind of thing. And then there might be the other side where it's like, well, your whole life has to be about your husband and children, and then you lose yourself in that. So I think there is something in the middle, needs to be in the middle, that says, you know, you can, you can be yourself, and you should be yourself, but you also, if our society is going to survive, we need mothers who are willing to mother yeah. and, <laughs> in a healthy way. <laughs> and know how to do, do that, right? Like, Yeah. Um, without feeling lost and alone. I think, I think that's kind of really the thing is. Well, when you talked about, if you, if you talk to guys your own, your own age about some things that you were struggling with, you would have gotten blank stares. I had that happen after our third child. And I understand now it was me trying to um, get, get from other people. Do you feel this way after you have a baby? And it was, I dealt with postpartum depression, but because it, it didn't look like what postpartum depression is described as looking in my nursing textbooks, I wouldn't have said I had it, mm. but I had that same kind of like, this is how I'm feeling after having babies. Do you feel similarly? And every time I spoke with someone who would have been in my stage of life about that, I got a blank stare. So. I don't know my point in that, but uh-huh. <laughs> my point is I can relate, I guess, that, you know, it is helpful. Like, if I had had someone older than me who had experienced that to be able to say, what you're feeling is completely normal, and these are some steps that you can take to get through it in a healthy way, wouldn't I have been so appreciative? And, yeah, that's not something that you could have helped me with because you're not a mother giving birth to babies similarly to how I can't help you with the healthy masculinity right I think the takeaway I hear (laughs) from what from what you're saying too and and let's make this the conclusion of the video is that um, it's easy to get irritated really anytime anyone in your life doesn't can't appreciate what you're saying Mm -hmm. and can't act upon that and part of the thing is the more the more deeply you relate to somebody, especially in, as a couple in a marriage, their role isn't as a mentor. Mm-hmm. And so I would say to someone who's frustrated that their husband hasn't appreciated their perspective is that, you know, in most marriages today, they're, comp- they're comprised of a man and a woman who both probably need help being more mature mm-hmm. than they got. And you can't get that help generally from one another. Um, it, you'll get something out of that. We, we certainly benefited mm-hmm. from each other along the way, but not as much as we would have if we had a strong, solid mentor of some kind. And I don't mean a professional mentor. I just mean like somebody just that we could go to and say, hey, I'm a little bit just befuddled about this husband yeah. thing. Um, I would love to know you know how to be more effective this way and really if you can have a little bit of compassion and empathy and understanding for one another realizing that you haven't had very much guidance Mm -hmm. and um, then I would say add to that some some high regard for each other give give your partner and this is for men and women the Mm -hmm. benefit of the doubt that they've been doing their best that they want their best but that that's not always easy to find and it's a lot harder to find without guides and without somebody showing you where that is, how to be that. And um, I think if you kind of take those perspectives and assume the best about your partner, that they're doing their best, that you're positioning yourself the best for a future together that is profitable, where you each know the importance of having somebody in your life who is kind of helping you reach your best and um, I find it the best for me if that person is not you. Yeah. I love your perspective. I love I love having the extra perspective you bring as a female, but 
I'm profited more in the area of how do I be a better man by getting that information from men. Yeah. And likewise, I know I have some perspective in your life, but I'll never take the place of an older, more mature, wise woman um, who could tell you really how to be your best you. Right. Any final words? Exactly. I concur. All right. Again, <laughs> we're spending Zelda Masterson. Um, if you want to find out more about what I do in Mentoring Men, you could scroll down in the description and you'll see links there. You can connect with myself, our community, etc. And uh, anything you want to see us talk about as a couple, just let us know in the comments and we'll make another unscripted, unedited, unplanned video where we talk about that. We'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.